Welcome back to my channel for another Leica Q3 episode and you can call this part 3 of my fully comprehensive tutorial about the new Leica Q3 but I renamed it differently because what this video is all about providing lots of tips and tricks about video shooting. So we'll swipe, we go right into the video mode and kick this off. Tip number one is a very simple one and don't get mad at me about what I'm going to say. But it is the following. If we go into the menu here, we find a lot of settings. Let's go to page number one. And on focusing, we have exactly the same settings as on still image photography. And that actually continues. In a moment, I will walk through all of them and will tell you what are the same settings for still images as you have them for video. So I recommend to you to really go through part one and part two of my comprehensive tutorial of the Q3 and look all these functions up because everything you will learn there, you can immediately apply also to videography. All right, let's do a quick tour. Let's go through the settings and let's flag what is different and what is the same when you compare still image shooting with video shooting so you get a first high level overview. On focusing mode, as I said, we have exactly the same settings as before. Autofocus mode, exactly the same. There is no difference here. It's exactly what you would use in still images. Same for focus assist, which uh, you would typically apply in manual focusing. We have touch autofocus, touch autofocus in EVF. I covered that in detail in the first two parts of my tutorial. Autofocus tracking start position, everything the same. The same applies to exposure metering. We have four settings here. I covered them all in previous videos. Exposure compensation is the same. ISO settings are exactly the same. White balance, you also get here the picker or the gray card, if you want to call it that way. And uh, if you look this up in my former tutorials, you will find all that. Scene mode is the same. Optical image stabilization is the same. Here we have differences, of course, because we are talking about video formats and no longer about JPEG or RAW, means DNG. Video settings is different, but customized control is exactly the same. We can set up favorites, we can customize our buttons here and so on. I come to that in a moment. HDMI with audio is of course only available in video mode. And by the way, we have here on the side, we have a fully capable HDMI port, which we can use for instance, to connect this to an Atomos Ninja 5 which is something I showed in my intro video on the Leica Q3 already. And so you can also externally record video into an Atomos device or other devices. Then digital zoom is the same, user profiles is the same, capture assistance is the same, play mode setup is the same, display settings is the same, Leica Photos app works in the same way. You can format your card also in video mode. You have the camera settings, which are the ones we've covered before in my previous two tutorials. Camera information is the same. We are still on firmware 1.1.0. Language is the same and resetting the camera. So that was a very quick walkthrough. Summarizing tip number one for this video, therefore is very simple. Just look up tutorial part number one and two. I will post the links down below in the info box. Get familiar with the camera. And if you have done that, come back to this video and get deeper on the specifics on video shooting settings you want to tweak here. And as I said at the beginning, lots of tips and tricks for pro videography with the Leica Q3. Tip number two is something that works already on the Leica Q2 with newest firmware and also works here on the Leica Q3 like a charm. And that's toggling between still image mode and video mode by a customized button. And typically you swipe and then you get into still image mode, you swipe again you get into video mode. You can also do this in the other direction. Here we are back in still image mode and here we are back in video mode. But if you want to have that rather on a physical button, then press and hold one of the function buttons here or the center button or the button on top of the rear control wheel. And then you can toggle between video and still image mode. So let's press and hold here. Let's go to photo and video. And then instead of swiping, we can also use that button here. Now we are back in still image mode. Now we are back in video mode, simple like that. Tip number three is a warning. Don't ever go into the following focusing mode. Let's go here to focusing. Then we have autofocus mode and never go into multi-field because then the camera is deciding what to focus on. And the problem with that is, and I'll show a clip in a second, is that it slightly changes the field of view depending on where the camera is focusing. 
So let's have a look into a sample clip and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Tip number four concerns video formats. Let's go here into the video settings, video format and resolution. Never go into MP4 because in MP4 you cannot leverage the full potential of the camera and I show you why. Let's go into MP4, let's choose here 4K. Let's take some of the settings here, let's take the best one and uh, then let's go back into the menu here. But if you are now going into video settings, you see that video gamma is grayed out. So you cannot shoot, for instance, in L-Log, which is one of the major topics of this video. We are going to look into this in detail. And if you are on MP4, you cannot leverage that for better dynamic range. So don't go into MP4, always shoot with MOV, because these are the settings which give you the maximum flexibility on your video shooting. Tip number five is slow motion. And slow motion is here under video format and resolution and you can go here into slow motion. Here we go. And then you have two settings, almost 120 frames per second. It's 119.88 or 100 frames per second. And the best effect you achieve with the setting at 120 frames per second and this gives you nice slow motion videos. It's only in full HD but you can easily scale this up to 4K in Premiere Pro and it looks really nice. So let's have a look at a sample clip so I show you what I'm talking about. Tip number six is leverage and use for your benefit the 8K resolution of the Leica Q3. And you get there again in video format and resolution. As I said before, never go for MP4, always go for MOV and then go for cinematic 8K for instance, which gives you about four times the resolution of a cinematic 4K video. And that means in Premiere Pro, you have lots of options to crop into the video and use keyframe technology to make your footage looking like if you would move the camera but de facto it's sitting on a tripod and is not moving at all. And I show one clip which I showed already in my intro video to the Leica Q3 and I show another one where I also want to have a very quick clip on how to edit this. I do this in a quick motion in Premiere Pro to set your keyframes and use the huge resolution of a cinematic 8K or 8K video to create a dynamic video which suggests that the camera is moving but de facto is sitting sturdy on a tripod. I will show the clip I just edited in quick motion in Premiere Pro in a moment when we talk about L-Log Gamma. So on video format and resolution I covered basically everything I wanted to say. Let's go into video settings. And here first of all microphone gain should be at medium. That's fine but you can boost it up to high. You can go to medium low and to low and to off. But I think it's fine to have it at medium and that works quite well for me. Then we have wind noise reduction that should always be on on and uh, you should never have it on off because the effect is really good. If the wind is blowing, you will not have so much disturbing noise in the background. And then we finally come to Video Gamma. Now Video Gamma is one of my favorite settings and it used to be there all the time on the SL2S and it also came to the SL2 with a firmware update and that is a really cool feature. So let's look into this in detail. First of all, we can go here to off. We can go to Hybrid Log Gamma. That's what HLG is standing for. And we can go to L-Log, which is the setting I recommend. Don't go to Hybrid Log Gamma because Hybrid Log Gamma 
needs an HDR ready TV and that is not what all people have available and it limits your options. So avoid that, don't go to HLG, go to L-Lock. And in L-Lock, we can now heavily improve the dynamic range of our video shooting and uh, we will in a moment see in the clip I just edited in Premiere Pro how this looks like if we shoot it. But if we go for L-Lock and uh, I go into live view, you see I have now a very flat profile here. And uh, I will provide in a moment an educational session on L-Lock Gamma and what it all means. And that very flat profile needs a color grading later on in post-processing. So let's have a look into the clip I just edited in Premiere Pro in the flat profile and then in the color grading with a so-called lookup table or LUTs in uh, short. And uh, let's then also spend some time to explain what's going on here. The clip I'm going to show now has a vertical red line coming into the frame from the left hand side and moving to the right hand side. And everything on the right hand side of that vertical red line is not color graded, has the very flat L log gamma profile and everything on the left hand side of that red vertical line is color graded with a lookup table and we go into more details in a moment. And by the way, the clip I'm showing now is the one I edited before in my quick motion in Premiere Pro for dynamic movements based on keyframes. I want to spend a couple of minutes to talk about L-Log Gamma and why shooting in L-Log is a good idea from a dynamic range perspective. And you see here illustratively a linear chart which maps exposure values on the horizontal axis to bits and let's call it light intensity information on the vertical axis. And uh, I've chosen here for illustrative purposes only a JPEG frame. JPEGs always have 8 bit and 8 bit have 256 values. Zero corresponds to the perfect black and 255 corresponds to the perfect white. Like I call such a linear curve or you could call it a mapping between exposure values and bits, a linear scene reflection in short LSR. Remember that acronym LSR because I will come back to it in a moment. And that is not a good profile for dynamic range. And why is this the case? Well, let's look into the first two exposure values. So let's go to exposure value of two. And then you see by that curve, this only gives you four bit of information. And if you want to recover information out of dark areas in the image, remember low values on the bit axis correspond to dark values or dark intensity in terms of light. Then this means you have in the shadows, in the dark areas of your frame, you have only four bit of information available and that is not a lot. In contrast to that, if you go to exposure values seven and eight, you see in between these two exposure values, there are 128 bit available. And that is super rich in terms of information. But unfortunately, in the super bright areas of your frame, very often you end up in overexposure and information is clipped anyway. So you have a lot of information in terms of number of bits available where you don't really want them, where you don't need them, and where you really need them, namely in the dark areas, in the shadows, you have at the first two exposure values only four bit of information available. That is of course not a good idea. And uh, what you can do in order to fix that, and that's exactly what L log gamma is doing, you transform the straight blue line here into a logarithmic curve. And that's what we see here on the right hand side. And now if we look at exposure value two, we see we have about 64 bit of information available in the dark areas of the frame. And we still have plenty of bits available in the brighter areas of the scene, but the curve saturates and becomes much flatter from an EV of four on, because then we come into the more bright areas of the scene where at a certain point in time, clipping will occur anyway, because exposures get quickly overblown. And in transforming that blue curve on the left hand side into the red curve on the right hand side, you gain, and that's the summary word on it, now a lot of dynamic range for your video shooting. It will give you a very flat profile in terms of color, but you can later color grade it and in this way preserve information in shadows and also get more information out of highlights. And that is exactly what you want. Now, I spoke about linear scene reflection, which is a terminology Leica uses. 
and they use it in what they call the Alloc reference manual. And I will post the link down below in the info box so you can look this up. And here they give us on the left hand side the Alloc curve they use. And you see on the right hand side in the color space that the Alloc space is larger than all the other spaces. And that is again what you want to have because you want to have richness in tonality. Although in our illustrative example before, I simplified and looked at light intensity on the bit axis only. But here we get the full color space and we see that the alloc space is larger than all the other color spaces we have here. And Leica also gives us in that alloc reference manual the transformation between linear scene reflection to alloc and vice versa. And for people who are familiar with numbers and formulas, this is in addition, of course, a very helpful information. Tip number 11 is about understanding lookup tables, acronymed LUTs. And uh, I have here the website for the Leica SL2S, where Leica actually offers LUTs for downloads. And you see this here in the red rectangle, you can download them and then you can apply them to your flat profile footage. Of course, I will post a link down below in the info box. So if you download them, you actually get a zip file coming from the left hand side here. If you unzip it, you get two folders. One is called classic, one is called natural. And if you look into that, we have in the classic folder a rec 709 and a rec 2020 profile. And the same we have also under the category natural. Now, how does the LUT look like? If I open this with text edit on my Mac, I first of all get a description. It says title software like a camera LUT, film version 6.3. It's a Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 LUT and then you see a bunch of numbers. So what means Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4? Rec. 709, also known as BT 709, also known as ITU 709 and also known as ITUR BT 709, is a color profile where Rec. stands for recommendation, BT stands for broadcasting television and ITU stands for the International Telecommunication Union and if you add an R at the end, it's about the radio communication sector. That is a standard defined by ITU for image encoding and signals for HD television. The gamma curve determines the smoothness of transition from black to white on a digital display. Typically we have here gamma 2.2 or gamma 2.4 and Rec. 709 typically comes with gamma 2.4 because gamma 2.4 has a slightly enhanced contrast and offers a higher saturation of colors than Gamma 2.2. Going back to that Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 LUT, which I opened in text edit, we see these numbers and every line has three numbers and these are values for the three different color channels RGB. And a LUT table is nothing else than a mapping for a red input value, a green input value and a blue input value into a red output, a green output and a blue output. And uh, in this way, you can in a very powerful, very flexible way, completely transform the look of your video clip by mapping different color values to other color values. That is what a LUT basically is all about. Now it is a bit more tricky than what I'm showing here on the slide, because if we move on here, we have for the Leica Q3 DNGs or RAW files with a 14 bit color depth. And that means if you proceed with that mapping for each and every value, you have, because of 14 bit, 16,384 values in each color channel. And uh, if you combine them all together, you have more than 4.4 trillion colors. And that is, of course, then a very huge file if you really want to specifically map each and every possible combination of RGB to some other combination of RGB. And that's why in LUTs, typically a more coarse grid plus some interpolation for values between the points in the lattice is used to reduce the file size and make the overall LUT more handleable in your post-processing. The size of the lattice in number of grid points is also specified in the LUT file here. And we see, first of all, this is a so-called 3D LUT. 3D means that each and every possible combination of RGB can be mapped to any other possible combination of RGB values. And it also gives us the grid size here namely 33. So let's look into that quickly. A typical lattice coarse grid size in LUTs is 17 times 17 times 17, or as in the Leica case we just saw, 33 times 33 times 33. And there's also 65 times 65 times 65, or even higher. And of course, the more points you have in the lattice or the grid, the finer is basically the color representation later on, because you don't have 
larger gaps to bridge via interpolation. So if we look at that on the Leica LUT specifically, where we have 33 times 33 times 33 grid points, we have overall 35,937 triples in the LUT file, which I showed before opened in text edit on my Mac. Now, every LUT corresponds to a so-called gamut, which describes the range of colors within the spectrum of colors. Let's call it a color space that can be reproduced on an output device like a smartphone, an HD television with a video. And uh, of course, you can Google this in the web and find out what Rec 207 looks like in terms of gamut, but you can also go into Python coding and just reproduce it yourself. And I have here just three lines of Python code and they produce me the following image if I use here the Rec 709 LUT, which Leica provided for download. And here is the image. So we see the overall color space. We see the area corresponding to Rec 709 and that little dot in the middle is actually the white point of the color representation here. And if you wanna compare that with the other Leica LUT, the BT 2020, then we see if we reproduce this one here via Python code that Rec 2020 actually offers an expanded gamut compared to Rec 709 in particular going more into the greens providing more richness there but also more in the reds and a little bit more into the blue areas of the color space. All right, I think that's enough about theory and color spaces, color grading, LUTs means lookup tables and so on. And I wanna move on to practical applications but I hope at least that this little excursion makes you a bit more secure when you work with LUTs because you know a bit better what this is all about. Tip number 12 is about applying now different LUTs to video footage, which has been shot with an L-Log Gamma profile, for instance, on the Leica Q3, but the same works also on other camera brands. If you shoot N-Log, for instance, with the Nikon C9 or Nikon C8, Nikon offers LUTs for download. And of course, you can also create your own LUTs and you can also find rich sources of LUTs in the web which you can download, what have you. So there are lots of opportunities to become creative and that's what tip number 12 is all about. So let's now apply the four Leica LUTs which I downloaded from the SL2S website to my L-Log Gamma Flat video profile for the clip I showed before. And you will see that there are only tiny little nuances in terms of differences between these four color gradings. Professional video editing software like here for instance Premiere Pro already has predefined LUTs typically to be applied. They will in most of the cases be standard LUTs corresponding to certain pro video cameras. And you can also via the Lumetri color section in Premiere Pro create your own LUTs and apply them to your log gamma flat video. And that is something which provides of course an enormous span of creativity you can apply to make your video footage looking special. So let's have a look into two clips where first of all I applied for predefined LUTs from Premiere Pro and then where I experimented and color graded myself, stored them with Premiere Pro and then uploaded them again in order to apply them to log gamma flat videos. Now for creating professional LUTs for video post-processing, I do not recommend to use the export function in Premiere Pro because at the very end, the grid size coming out of these LUTs, if you export them, is not large enough and you might have some color bending and other issues. Then better go for professional LUTs download sites like here from Sony or use a professional LUTs creator and you find various software in the web which you can use for that. Tip number 13 is about LUT preview in the camera. And here I'm now in L-Log Gamma recording. So let's quickly check that. Let's go to page number two, video settings. You see L-Log is activated. And then my profile is as flat as we saw it now various times on my MacBook. And maybe that's not what I want. Maybe I wanna have a color graded preview on the LCD screen or the electronic viewfinder right in camera 
and in this way have already an impression how the video looks like, how the colors are looking like and so on. And for this we have a LUT preview setting which is also under LLOG. So let's go back into menu page number two, video settings, then we have video gamma LLOG, then we have settings, let's go to LLOG and then we have LUT profile. And if I go into that, currently it's off, that's why the profile is so flat and reflects the LLOG gamma view, but I can also choose here pre-populated natural or classic. And let's go to classic and let's have a look. And now you see colors are back. So this is no longer a flat log gamma profile. I have already some color grading going on in the preview on the camera only, but that's only a preview. And that's important to remark. The video footage you will later take from your SD card and import into Premiere Pro for instance, will still have that flat look which I showed before various times on my MacBook. And I can quickly show that. Let's quickly record a video here. Let's. Uh, Go. All right, let's go back and let's remove the LUT preview. So we go here to LLOG, then we go to settings, then to LLOG, and then we go back into LUT profile off. You see in the preview now it's this flat profile again, almost no colors. I recorded the video. And now if I go into play mode, you will see first of all the video I just recorded with the flat profile and next to it, so that's number 4107. And then if I have a six at the end of the digit, it's the same flat profile you see. So this is really only a preview function I have here. And what's really cool is that if I have custom LUTs created, as I did before in Premiere Pro, I can also import them into the camera and use them for my preview function. So let's quickly have a look where we find this. Let's go back into video settings. Let's go here, settings, alloc, and so on. And now we have here custom LUT. And custom LUT gives us three slots with two options. We have always EVF LCD and HDMI. And you remember I had in my intro video on the Leica Q3 here connected an Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. And uh, if I have connected a video device, then I can also set up different profiles for the preview. Again, it's only a preview whether I want to see it on EVF and LCD, which is here and we have one, two, three of such storage places or what I want to see in preview on my HDMI screen. And also here we have one, two and three. And uh, I have already imported some LUTs profiles onto the SD card, which is currently in the Leica Q3. And the way to do this is you need to rename them. And renaming means typically if you export this out of Premiere Pro, it has an extension cube with an E at the end. But the Leica Q3 in the same way as the SL2S and the SL2 do only allow for extensions up to three letters. So you just remove the E and then you import them onto the highest level of the hierarchy in terms of folders on the SD card, which you use in your Leica Q3. And then you have them on the card and can use them. Now the problem is if you do this on a Mac, extensions are typically not visible. And if you look here on my MacBook, I currently have renamed it but there is still a dot cube with an E at the end as the extension of the file name. So I have to correct for this and have to make sure that it is really in a format so that the Leica Q3 can read it. Otherwise, if I push now the button here, it will tell me import failed. Actually, there's unfortunately one more layer of complexity here, namely the two LUTs, which I got out by export from Premiere Pro and just placed on the SD card for my Leica Q3 had to be converted before I moved them to the SD card into a 33 size grid because export in Premiere Pro delivers only a 16 size grid. And that's not what the Leica Q3 will accept for previewing footage in camera in the way I'm showing in a moment. And you see here DaVinci Resolve in the background where I convert these LUTs into the right size, which the Leica Q3 then will accept for preview. In general, I anyway recommend for color grading of videos much more DaVinci Resolve than Premiere Pro, although Premiere Pro is typically my software to go to when it comes to video cutting. Now I'm ready to show how this works with the preview function. So let's go back into page number two and the video settings. Let's go into video gamma all the way down. You know the procedure by now and let's go to custom LUT. And let's now use, because I don't have connected here a video device, just LUT1 and LUT2 for EVF and LCD. So let's go here and then you find the two LUTs I just placed on the SD card of the Leica Q3 after I converted them in DaVinci Resolve. So let's use for the first slot math and let's use for the second slot math WP. 
And now you see they are registered here. So we can go back in the menu and go to LUT profiles. And currently that's off. That's why we saw that flat profile. And now we have below natural and classic, which we saw before these two custom LUTs here, namely math and math WP. So let's take math. Let's go back into live view. And you see now the color is back and the flat profile is gone. And we can also go to that warm popping color profile, which I created in Premiere Pro. Let's go back here. Alloc, let's go to settings and then we go here and choose the other profile I stored on the SD card and then we get warmer color you see and also popping color. And that's the way it works with preview. I can recommend this and uh, if you are a pro shooter over time you will have a full set of LUTs which you use for your post-processing of videos and you can store three of them on your Leica Q3 for the preview. So you see already in live view how this video will be color graded, give or take. And you also can have them in a folder where you can work with them in DaVinci Resolve and also use them in Premiere Pro. Simple like that. Tip number 14 also is about the appearance of your video footage. And you can work here with the Leica looks in the same way as what I described in part two of my tutorial in still image photography. So we go here into the video settings and then we go away from video gamma. We put this to off and then we get here video styles and Leica looks. You have the same video styles as what you have on photography and you can also use the new Leica looks. And you can go here for instance to let's go to sepia and then your video will get a filter like this and has a very special look. Let's go to one more in order to illustrate the concept. Let's go here to video settings, Leica looks, let's go to blue. And you see how the appearance of your video changes and you have this Leica calibrated special look in terms of color nuances in one or the other direction on your video footage. Tip number 15 and the last one in this video is about monochrome videography. And you find this again under video settings, which is of course the menu entry I'm focusing on here because as I said at the beginning of the video, almost everything else is the same as on still image photography, which I demonstrated in part one and part two of my tutorial. So if we go into video setting, we have here if video gamma is off, if it is on, it will be deactivated and grayed out in the same way as the Leica looks. But if it is off, you can also get a monochrome filter on top of your video footage. And I personally like in particular the monochrome high contrast. So let's go to this and look at that. And that looks just really good, right? Let's take a little clip here. And I think black and white is not only beautiful in photography, it is also beautiful in videography having monochrome clips and you can take them here and can then post process them in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. Simple like that. All right, that's it. I want to stop here. I think I explained everything you need to know on videography with the new Leica Q3. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy and of course, Peace out.